Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over how to do a one-to-one -one relationship in Prisma. So right here I have a data model and within it there is two types, a user and a profile. And I want to set up a one-to-one -one relationship. And the way I can do this is by adding a field on one of the types. So here is me adding a relationship to profile from user. Um, and what I do is I give it a name and then I give it the type. Um, and the type for this property is going to be the type that I want to relate it to. In this case it's profile, so I use profile and then we use a directive called at relation. And then we give this a name and you're going to want to remember this name because it's important um, to matching up the relationship. And then you, this is an optional field you don't have to add. This is on delete. So in this case um, you specify what you'd like it to do when you delete a user. So when you use the cascade one what that does is when I delete a user, it also will delete the profile. Um, and what I can do instead of this is, look, for example, maybe I don't want to delete the profile, I can leave it the default. Um, and the default is uh, set null. And uh, if you like that setting, you can just leave it like this. And in fact, you don't even have to use the uh, this thing, the at relation directive. If you want to keep the default values, you can and it works fine. But if you want to set it up so it will delete the profile, you use cascade and you have to specify the relation. And now that I specified that, it creates in the database. And whenever I'm creating a user, querying a user, I can also query or create a profile. But I cannot create a profile um, and then also create the user or query a profile and get the user for that profile. To do that, I have to set up the relationship on the other end. So here's what it looks like to create the relationship on the other end. And note, this is still a one-to-one -one relationship. The other thing that makes this a one-to-one -one relationship is I did not add brackets around profile. So that would change the manner of it. Do a one-to-many or a many-to-many -many if I had brackets on both sides. Because um, that would be an array of profiles or users back. So here I have um, the name of the property, which is user. And then I said I want to relate it back with the user type. And then I set up a relation. And notice the names are the same. Um, and this is important because you want to make sure they line up. And the reason for that, the reason why you have to give it a name, is you might have multiple relations. So for example, uh, profile is only related to user once, but I might have another. A field here called editor for example. An editor is a user as well. So in that case, so if we had editor, we'd want to set up a new relation here that's called editor profile for example. And then over here I would have the editor could have its own profile and then have an editor profile for example um, like that. And so then I would have the names match up here, editor profile, and so this matches with this guy and this one matches with that guy. Um, the other thing is I set the on delete to null. Um, again, you don't have to actually specify this if you don't want to. Um, you may be wondering, can I do cascade both ways? So um, when you delete a profile, it also deletes the user. You can't. They don't allow that in Prisma and that might just be a database thing as well. Um, so when I delete the profile, um, the user will just be set to null, it will not get deleted. So that's something to just keep in mind. Um, so it doesn't work both ways, but you can swap them so you can just decide what side you want the cascade to work on. Um, but now let's get into some more practical how what this actually looks like when you say are creating things. So here is GraphQL Playground, and here is how you would create a user and also create a profile at the exact same time. So you say a mutation, we're going to create a user, and then in the data field, you specify the profile, and then I want to create a profile, and then what fields you want. Um, and so in that way, I'm creating both a user, so I can see his ID, um, and then also a profile, and I can hit first name, last name. So in one mutation, you can do both steps now that we set up that relationship. Um, and you can also query the fields. So for example, we're getting the ID and the profile here. Um, here's what it looks like to update. You'll notice it looks exactly the same except a few differences. The first is instead of the word create here, it is now update. Um, and then we said the where clause here. So the ID is equal to that. And so what I was doing here is finding a user who has this ID 
and then I want to update their profile setting the last name to Tom. So that user we created over here, I looked him up by his ID and set his profile to Tom. So notice how we were able to look something up by the user, um, but then basically jump to that relation and update it, so update the profile. And now, uh, you, this probably seems obvious from what we just did, but here's how you query it. Um, so here's, I'm grabbing all the users and I'm grabbing the ID of the user and then also the profile. So that's grabbing the relationship there, first name and last name. Uh, and here's how you would delete a user. Um, and we just saw that I set up a cascade, so this would also delete the profile. Um, but it doesn't work both ways. But again, you can see here, here there's nothing really special with uh, you have to do to have it delete the profile as well. Um, it just does that automatically. Um, because we set up the cascade, so we just said delete user where the ID is that, and it takes care of it. Now, because we set up the relationship both ways, so right uh, here to there, and then here to there, we can do the same operations the other way around. So here is how you would, for example, create a profile, and then at the same time create a user. So we'd say data, the fields are first name, last name, and then our user, and for example, if we want to create this guy as an admin, we can say create, and then the admin is true. So here we set up a first name, last name, and then it, you can see it's just kind of inverted the way everything works. Uh, we get the profile fields first, and then we can select a user and get his ID and his admin. And by the way, if you don't want to, you don't have to do it all in one step. So for example, you saw me here create both a profile and a user at the same time. But maybe, for example, you create the user first. So for example, here I'm setting up an admin, and I'm selecting his first name and his last name from his profile, but his profile is not set up yet, so it returned null. Um, but I have this user in the database, but he doesn't have a profile. So now I want to create a profile and basically link it together. Um, the way you do that is by connecting. So we take the ID of this user, and we use this keyword called connect when we create the profile. Um, you could also do this for updating a profile if you wanted to, or updating a user. But here I create a profile, I pass in the fields that I want for the data fields for that, and then I set up the user, and instead of the word create, I say I want to connect it. Um, and I pass in how I want to connect it, and I connect it by the ID. So this ID is the user's ID. Um, and we can see we connect with Joe, which we set up over here. Or I guess this guy's, this guy's name isn't Joe, we set up Joe here. Uh, but this guy's ID who is an admin. Okay, so that's how these things work. You may be wondering how the heck did I figure out like what I had to put the word connect here uh, and user here and data there. Well, all of this is in the schema. So this little side tab in GraphQL Playground is very helpful. I recommend just like going through this whenever you're trying to figure things out. So for example, creating a user. I click on create user. I can see right here is the basically the outline or the types that I pass in. So I can see the parameters are data. Um, and there's one called data, and I can see the arguments all down here. I can see their types. So for example, I can see what can I pass to the data type. Well, I can see I can pass an admin, um, and I can pass a profile. So I can see, all right, I want to pass in a profile, and then I can see I can either create the profile or connect it. And then from there, what fields I can add. And it just kind of like is a little graph that you go down. So I would recommend checking this out um, and using this while you're doing it. And uh, the stuff that I wrote right here, it's going to map to how we would actually write the JavaScript code or the TypeScript code. So the connectors basically matches exactly to what, the co uh, what you write here in graphical or in uh, GraphQL Playground. So it would be create profile, and then it would be the same shape when you're creating it. Um, but that is it for this video, guys. If you liked this video on relationships and one-to-one -one relationships, let me know in the comments below, and I'll also do a one-to-many or a many-to-many -many relationship with uh, uh, Prisma as well. And then let me know also if you have any particular questions about how those relationships work or how to query them or whatnot, and I'd be happy to cover it.